one thing that people don't do often enough is to look at the OAT gauge. Okay, you're on instruments, okay, fine. Uh, you've gotten your uh, forecast and you're flying along, uh, but you need to check the OAT. If it's uh, anywhere from a few degrees above zero Celsius to about t minus 20 degrees Celsius, you're in that icing zone. You are in potential danger right there. You would notice it on the small projections on the airframe first, maybe a rivet head or a uh, some sort of probe that's on the airplane, an antenna, uh, something small, something with a small leading edge radius. It will show the ice first. Um, clear ice might seem like rain at first, okay, especially if it's large droplet icing. Large droplet icing typically occurs right around zero. And the danger there is you hear it, you hear it hitting, it sounds like rain. What it's really doing is it's landing as freezing rain and it's going to run back on the wing just like rain does. Okay? But it's going to stop. It's going to freeze on the way back. So you need to watch the run back and see is it running back all the way? Uh, in the corners of the windshield, is it still liquid? Uh, or is it starting to ice up in the corners of the windshield? Again, these small radius areas. Uh, with rime ice, you look out there and you might just see a very thin line at first. I mean, a line maybe that that wide, going along the whole leading edge of the wing. That's the start of the rime ice. So there's your warning right there. Later on, if you ignore all that, you're going to get vibrations. Antennas can start vibrating. Uh, a buildup on the propeller can cause uh, uh, propeller vibrations. And then your controls are going to get more sloppy. You're going to need more power. Of course, by then, you should know that you are, in fact, in ice. But you need to be looking outside. You're going to be on instruments, of course, and everybody says, you know, don't forget to look outside, especially true in icing potential conditions so that you can see uh, what's going on with the way the precipitation uh, is adhering to the airplane. If the uh, pitot tube uh, intake and the drain port are both blocked, uh, the airspeed indicator is going to act like an altimeter. So if you were to climb, uh, it would, it would uh, indicate higher airspeed. If you're going to descend, it would indicate lower airspeed. So you can see the trouble. Uh, when you're climbing, uh, you're, you're going to want to raise the nose more, more, more to get to V, Y, or whatever climb speed you've chosen. But in fact, you're getting closer to the stall, even though the airspeed is indicating higher. And the same thing with the descent. You're going to want to dump the nose and pick up more airspeed so that you don't go too slow. But it's a false indication. That's why it's important to turn on the pitot heat. As far as block static, the altitude will freeze right there uh, at the point it occurred. And the same thing with your uh, vertical velocity indicator. It'll, it'll stop. Even though you go up or down, nothing will happen. Once you start accumulating ice, uh, you have to do everything you can to escape. Uh, even though you may have boots, uh, it's certainly no guarantee. And a lot of people have gotten in big, big trouble because you're still going to have the drag, you're still going to have uh, some aerodynamic uh, degradation, you're still going to have the control issues uh, because you can get these ridges after the boots, uh, you can get ice build up again on the, uh, on the unprotected areas that increase the drag.